Hi, this is Phil Spencer, and you're listening to the Inner Circle Podcast. For the fans, by the fans. First, thank you, Graham, and foremost for taking the time to stop by to talk with us here at Tick Podcast. You know, as we continue to try and introduce the Xbox team to the community and get somewhat of an inside look at how things work inside Microsoft, many fans only see you on TV and at events, or most recently on Xbox Daily on the Xbox One itself. But your official title is Social Marketing Manager with the team. With that said, tell us how you got started working at Microsoft and how does being the Social Marketing Manager impact the Xbox brand when not on TV? Well, first of all, Thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know we've been trying to sort it out for a while, so it's, it's a pleasure uh, that, to be here, and I'm glad we, we, we sorted it out. Mm-hmm. Nice to spend some time with you. Um, <laughs> so uh, how did I get started working at Microsoft? I've, I've been at Xbox for for over nine years now. Wow. Um, which is starting to sound like a really long time. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I started as a games journalist. Uh, in the UK, I was on uh, Computer and Video Games magazine, uh, which is now sadly no longer, uh, and then moved on to Computer and Video Games website, mm-hmm. uh, cbg.com, which is now sadly no longer. <laughs> <laughs> starting to sense a, a theme here. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then from there, I went on to official Xbox magazine uh, in the UK and actually launched um, their new website uh, just before the Xbox 360 launched. Um, uh, in the US and the UK, right? Uh, so that was really cool because I'd always kind of been, uh, I'd always kind of been on the Xbox beat as a journalist. So, right. You know, I kind of felt more like Xbox was kind of my console, and I did more news on Xbox and more reviews and stuff. So it was really cool to move over to official Xbox magazine, you know. And, and through that, I got to know a lot of the guys at the the Xbox UK and the Xbox European teams. And you know, one thing led to another, and about a year later, I, I ended up working on the European Xbox team as a community manager. And, and you know, and that my job role since then over that nine years has just changed so much. Like, you know, and, and because it's been quite a long time, you know, like social media has completely changed. The, yeah. way the community, the Xbox community is, has completely changed. You know, we've seen things like video content, you know, YouTube was, was barely even in existence right. when I started, you know, and, and now obviously it's, it's this whole, behemoth uh, <laughs> online uh, and everything that means for video games you know and then, yeah and just every, the way the consoles have developed as well it's just been a fascinating journey and and, it, and from from a kind of personal point of view and professional point of view it's allowed me to do so many different things but always at the heart of it for me has been community and the xbox fan and this incredible community that we have around around xbox and you know we've had highs and lows over the over the nine years and um, and that's brought some challenges with it, as well as some amazing moments. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. And and it's and I guess it's kind of weird that it's like you know I sort of think nine years in in at Xbox is a long time. But God, I, you know, I don't, I never feel myself thinking, well, I should probably move on and do something different or work somewhere else. I just right. feel completely. You know, it's always different. It's always changing, and I just, you know, I, I love Xbox. It's great. And I love working with the Xbox community. And no, that's just never. I guess I've been lucky in that I work for a brand that I absolutely love and a product that I absolutely love with a community that I absolutely love. And uh, yeah, I just, it's, I can't really, can't picture myself anywhere else at the moment. But I mean that in a good way. Yeah, no, definitely. It's funny that you say that because. You know, I, we get those questions, or we got a few of those questions. I remember being at E3 and talking with Hip Hop Gamer, and he asked me, you know, why did you only do an Xbox podcast? And I said, why not? You know, and it's like when you love doing something and you love supporting something or you feel comfortable in the place and you feel like it's yours and you own it to a certain extent, you want to do it. You have the passion for it. So I completely understand where you're coming from. You know, and guy, guys like Jez, who started Xbox Mad, myself, who started Tick Podcast, we, you know, we really have a passion for the Xbox brand. And it's really good to hear that uh, you also have the same passion. So that's really awesome, yeah. man. It's really awesome. And I, and I love it. And I, that's why I love working with you guys. And, you know, I love seeing the, the, the communities that, that 
that spring up around Xbox and the, the communities that you guys lead and and the kind of creativity and the the passion that comes out of those communities, you know. And again, like my job role, I, you know, you, you asked, you know, what does being social marketing manager really mean and, and how does that impact the Xbox brand? You know, my day to day is, you know, it can be working on our social media channels across Europe and, and creating content for them. It can be working on campaigns around big game launches like Forza. It can be working on events like Gamescom and E3 and getting our community involved in them. And it can be front of camera stuff, you know, so it's, there's just so many different parts of of my job and so many different parts of the Xbox community that it's, yeah, it's a fascinating place to work. Love it. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, Xbox One just finished what many would call the best Gamescom in Xbox history. At least I feel it was the best <laughs> best Gamescom in Xbox history. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Yeah, it was like awesome. In terms of the media briefing alone, I think it's, it was certainly the, the best we've ever done. Yeah, and you know what? It, it really started a buzz throughout the industry as well. Um, you know, what were some of your highlights and takeaways from Gamescom? The game you're looking forward to the most out of the big three, and what are your top three favorites of all time? Whoa, there's a few questions in there. <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> that is a tick I signature. I got to get one of those in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I get like the, the big thing that stood out for me about Gamescom is that you know I think in the past, and and it's not just Xbox that's been guilty of this. I think it's been a kind of Gamescom thing. Is that it, the the news that comes out of Gamescom is generally kind of a reheat from E3. Right. So there's not that much new at Gamescom. I will, I've always loved it as a show because it's about gamers and real fans of mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. It's about them getting hands on with with all the great games that we saw announced at E3. So I've always loved that part of it. But you know, it's, there hasn't been in the past big announcements, big new news you know, really exciting things to talk about. Right. And I think this year we really delivered those things. And I also like the way that we kind of set it up front. We sort of said, you know, at E3 we're going to talk about this stuff. At Gamescom we're going to talk about this stuff. If you want to see Scalebound, Quantum, Crackdown, we're going to have that for you at Gamescom. You know, we really followed through on that and we had some some nice surprises in there as well, like Halo Wars 2, which I know there was a lot of rumors big. about. That was yeah, big. That was big. Yeah, that was so cool to have that. As a you know a really genuine big surprise at the end of the of the briefing, uh, you know and announcements like DVR and stuff like that. Like there was some really really good news in there, so I'm delighted we did that. The other thing that really really made it a special week last week for me was all of the fan activity that we did. Right. You know we've done community stuff before at Gamescom, uh, and it's always been a total pleasure. But I think last week we just kind of took it to another level. Learned a lot from the fan fest at E3. Um, and worked with the same team that worked on that. Um, but, you know, it, like encouraging our European audience to come and join us for Gamescom, to yeah. come and line up to get access to FanFest. You know, the, the day that, that our fans were lining up in Cologne, it was raining. I was almost swore there. It, it, was, <laughs> it was really, really heavily raining. And and yet we had hundreds of people come and line up on the street in Cologne wow. in the rain with smiles on their faces, so excited just to be part of it. And like for us, that's just incredible, you know, because there's always a part of you you think we're we're kind of we're asking people to make a leap of faith here to come right. and stand on the street and line up for an experience. And you, there's always a part of you that thinks, oh my God, what if no one turns up? But like I woke up last Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. and looked at my Twitter and I already had tweets from people who were in line from like 1 a.m. the night before and, and it made me feel so much better. I was like, That's <laughs> you know, if our fans are that, you know, our European fans are that keen to be a part of this experience, then, then I can't wait to get down in there and meet them, you know, and then Anne Greenberg and Phil Spencer and, and Larry came down to meet them. and It was just amazing. And that was like the start of a two-day experience for, for us and our fans. Mm. Where we just we did so many cool things and, and, and had so many great experiences and got so much good feedback from our fans and European fans. Right. Just absolutely loved it. It was it was it was brilliant to be part of that. Yeah. We had just missed um we had just missed Fan Fest when we got to E three. Oh. Yeah. It was like I'm on sorry, a Saturday yeah. and we got there on a Sunday. But definitely I could see the experience of what people went through and, and you know, I don't see a lot of other I won't say that the other companies aren't doing it, but I don't see it. You know, I think 
what's been really great about Xbox is that you guys have really put the effort into putting it out into the public to let yeah. the fans know that you guys really care. Because I think one of the stigmas of the Xbox platform was that it was so robotic in the past mm. and there was really no passion behind it. It was just a soulless money grubbing company, <laughs> you know, that was just gobbling up everything that they could get their hands on. But the reality of it is, is that no, there are real people that work at the company and I'm glad that, you know, you guys are really putting off this big, big effort socially to get the fans involved and let them know that, look, Microsoft is not just a company. We are a, you know, we are gamers as well. I think that's really important. Yeah. But at the end of the day for us, like Xbox lives and dies with the fans, you know, and, and as I'm sure you've seen over the past couple of years, we've made like such a big change in the way that we're, we're listening to our mm -hmm. audience and our fans. And I'm so pleased we've done that. Um, yeah. And that comes from the top down, you know, that's from Phil Spencer all the way down through the company. And I think just, you know, our fan fest activity is just, it, it's, it's a desire from us, A, to give our fans an incredible experience and really involve them in um, what we're doing at these events. But B, it's such a great chance for, for, for everyone in the company to, to talk directly to our fans, right. the people who love Xbox and people who... You know, they, yeah, they love Xbox, but they also have really brilliant um, critical feedback on Xbox as well, and that helps us so much. Um, actually, you know, it helps us probably more than positive feedback because it, it shows where we can make changes and, and, and where we need to get better, hmm. uh, and that makes it such a you know such a big difference for us. So, yeah, I, I you know other other people are doing it. Sorry, mate. Other people are doing it, but I think we're we're kind of really raising the bar at the moment on the on the on the fan stuff, and uh, you know, and I hope you guys see that as well. Yeah. I was um I was just going to say that I was at Gamescom last year too, and it was it was my first Gamescom, and um I didn't I wasn't there in time for the briefing, but I got I got into the showcase, and uh, I think it was actually you who helped me get into the showcase <laughs> after after the event, and um I mean I was I was crazy impressed with how it was set out last year it was the same building wasn't it and yeah. um there was like so much you know going on so many hands-on experiences there tons and tons of food and booze but um, <laughs> i was like <laughs> when you when you talk about raising it to the next level uh, this year was just you know incredible like you had the the forza cars were there you know um i know my colleague from window central is a massive racing fan and you had to cut the actual cars in the in the foyer, didn't you? And, yeah. Um, that uh, that little rock band thing. Uh, yeah, that was quality. Like, like in that in the basement where they had like a they had like a setup where it was like like a real band like on 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 stage of the gig with all the rock rock band peripherals. Yeah. That was really cool. And there's just there just seemed to be way more um things to do compared to yeah. last year. So it was uh, definitely. You know, at, at the start of that, the, the FanFest showcase event, you know, we got everyone into the, the main auditorium where we'd done the media briefing, you know, Phil and Aaron uh, did a great intro to everyone. Then we had the, the Crackdown team come up and, and do the behind closed demo of Crackdown for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Tomb Raider team came up and did the behind closed demo of Tomb Raider for everyone. And it was just, it was just a really special moment and you could just really feel the the excitement uh, in the room uh, it was it was awesome it's one of the one of my best memories in my nine years at xbox seriously um standing on that stage in front of uh, the fans who had you know made such an effort to be there with us it was it was phenomenal loved it awesome so graham you know obviously three big games shown at yeah. gamescom you know out of scale bound crackdown and quantum break you know, I know you love them all. We all love them all. But there's always one that's really it's like, I got to get that game. Which one do you think was it for you? Uh, it's like it's like choosing my favorite child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me just say quickly, like, I'm really excited about Quantum Break. Like, massive fan of uh, Remedy and loved Alan Wake in particular. Right. Absolutely loved that game. So, um, and, I, and I loved the, the, the gameplay demo we showed at, at, at Gamescom. I think the visual effects look amazing. So I'm really, I think that is going to be sick. I can't wait for that. Uh, but Crackdown's the one for me. And God. I, I should mention Skillbound quickly. Just to, <laughs> 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 the answer is all three, all three of them. Yeah, yeah all three. All but, three no, of them. But in all seriousness, Crackdown is like, I absolutely love the original Crackdown. And 
and this might sound a bit daft, but because it's it's basically a Scottish game, um, and so so I I feel a little bit um, more connected to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, and I really really think a lot of Dave Jones. Uh, I got the, had the pleasure of interviewing him on the on the Daily Show at Gamescom. You know, he's another Scot. He is one of the the minds behind the original Grand Theft Auto. Uh, so he, you know, you know, I was a massive fan of that in its time as well. So he's nice. kind of a hero to me, uh, and the, you know, the fact that he's 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 still based in Dundee in Scotland. That's where the development team are, and they're working away on it and doing really incredible, uh, you know, envelope pushing stuff with with the new Crackdown. So uh, that the demo they showed with the destruction is just incredible, and the way that they're using the cloud in a way that's so tangible and you can really you can you can see the benefit of using the cloud right with the crackdown destruction i think that's really exciting so so yeah i think crackdown is the one that i'm i'm most looking forward to yeah we're reaching out to dave to get him on um i, I started last year trying to make yeah. a way to get dave on so obviously i'm glad that this is now out in the open and people can see what this is all about so hopefully he comes yeah. on um but you know look, great. there's always concerns about you know whether they were using the xbox was it closed anything like that i think all those things would be answered over time the more information we get but it's definitely one of the most exciting games it honestly maybe if not the biggest turning point in the in the xbox life cycle in my opinion um and the only reason why i say that is because you know for two years we've spoken about the cloud you know mm -hmm. phil's spoken about the cloud everyone's heard about the cloud um and 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 i'll be honest for some uh, fans who don't like the Xbox One, um, they think of it as a joke. Over has been the the this pun that's been a negative stigma for the Xbox platform. And seeing this now has actually quieted a lot of people. Or now the new saying is it can be done too on this so and so and so. So it's just funny to see the change that this has brought to the industry. And I can't wait to see what Crackdown looks like for sure. Totally. Yeah, and I think it's you know we've talked about the cloud a lot. I think. This is the first time that we've had like a really great tangible example of, right. of, of the the difference it can make to the gaming experience, and yeah, I mean that's that's really early footage they were showing. It's pre-alpha. I know. And I gameplay. Know. I don't know so, why people know, don't a, see that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more to come, and it looks so good already. I, yeah, I can't I, wait to see all that. Yeah, into. definitely. And I, and another thing about Quantum Break, I re, I really hope I know Alan Wake is on the BC list, but I really think they should combine the two. I think they should yeah. have. When you get Quantum Break, you get BC Alan Wake along well, with it. I love that idea. I mean, Alan Wake was really quite high up in the voting for for back and forth. It was. Well, so, it was. Um, that's a great show. I'm yeah. gonna try and take credit for that. <laughs> 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 so continuing, um, just to finish up. What is your top three games of all time? That's an actual <laughs> fan question. Someone oh, is really good. is interested in knowing what are your top three games of all time? Well, I was um, someone asked me what was my favorite game of all time last week at Gamescom actually, and and, and the the one I came back to, you know, and, and forgive me, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a, a game series um, rather than a single game out of that series. But Civilization okay. is, is the game that you know over my life I have played every single version of it including like the mobile versions etc hmm. and uh have surely spent the most number of hours playing and had the most enjoyment out of those hours as well i'm just so, like i love that game love it's, uh, it. one of the few games that fully supports touch on a surface pro 3 as well isn't it civ 5 yeah. well and i just got a surface 3 like two weeks ago and was very pleased to figure out that if I just knock a lot of the visual settings back, I can run a pretty swift, um, full fat uh, with all the expansions game of Civilization V on the Surface 3 with touch. Nice. So, crazy. That's, nice. I'm really pleased with that. That's, that's crazy. crazy. So I would say that's the, you know, that's my, my total, uh, my total favorite. And other than that, like, uh, Skyrim was a game that, uh, you know, on 360, I, I spent 120 hours playing or something Ooh, like that. You sound know, like me. <laughs> and that was, you know, yeah, that was, you know, and that was when I, you know, that's after having kids. <laughs> and having kids had a massive impact on my gaming time. But, yeah. You know, I managed to do that. 
Oh, and, that's and awesome. Love, uh, similarly, Fallout. Like, I've always loved the whole Fallout series. Played the originals back in the day on, on the PC and, and loved them. Fallout 3 was, you know, it was a game I could not wait to get my hands on uh, and played a ton of. You know, so obviously really excited about Fallout 4 as well. That's awesome. Um, yeah, so, well, that's three. I've named three, you know. So, <laughs> so that's, three. that's cool. <laughs> You know, yeah, you know, you know one other, one other game, and this is potentially uh, slightly uh, controversial, but one other game that really, really stands out for me, and it's fairly recent, is The Last of Us on, on PS3. A lot of people like Last of Us. I haven't played it yet, but I think when I get a PS4, I might, I might dibble dabble in the uh, the remastered that game was version. Really, something is a pretty incredible game. And I, like I, I do, you know, I'm quite into the whole post-apocalyptic thing, and I think that game, probably more than any other game, kind of really nailed that mm. in, a, in quite a, a true and honest way. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that that was a, I, I loved that game, loved that game. So yeah, no, that'd be another one that really stands out from recent memory. Mm. Sweet. So our friend of the show, Ken Lobb, <laughs> big big friend of the show. Love Ken. Yeah, Ken is awesome. Um, he mentioned uh, when we spoke at E3 that E3 was about what you can expect from the Xbox One this year. And Gamescom was about what you could expect next year. Um, you know, but the big thing, though, was to appeal to the European gamer who hasn't bought an Xbox One yet. In your opinion, what do you think needs to be done to appeal to the European gamer who hasn't purchased an Xbox One yet? And do you believe that Gamescom's did its job to show Europe the Xbox One has games that appeals to that market? Well, I think, yeah, I think, first of all, we've been on a journey for, for a couple of years now, really, since we, we, we announced and revealed the Xbox One, which, let's be honest, wasn't the perfect. Right. <laughs> it's a bit of an understatement, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and, and I think a lot of the, the, the issues... Um, and, and things we changed quite quickly um, about Xbox One, things like the you know the the, the internet connection, uh, the DRM stuff. Right. I think that had a that had a really big impact in Europe, especially. Um, and I think the the changes that we've been making, the feedback that we've been listening to from from our audience, um, you know, and the, and the continual improvements and updates that mm-hmm. we're doing, mm-hmm. I think it has put us on a much better um, the road to appealing to the to the European gamer, and then when you start adding in the the this incredible lineup that we're building at the moment, um, I think that from a from a purely gaming point of view, it, you can't really argue with that lineup. It's it's phenomenal. Yes, uh, the, the sheer number of exclusives that we're we're putting out this year and into next year as well is you know it's you line that up with the competition. It's it's kind of there's not really much of a comp- uh, you know a discussion there. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think that's factual. You know, if you if you literally line them up next to each other, you know, it's not me being biased. I think, right. You know, just, right. You know, other consoles don't have an awful lot of exclusives this year in particular. Right. But so you know, I think we're already on a, on a good road, and I really hope that European gamers are, are kind of are paying attention to that. Uh-huh. I think Gamescom was very much about us coming onto European turf and saying, you know, this is what we've got. We're listening to you guys. We want to listen to you more. Um, uh, and here are games that, that, that do, um, that should work for you in, in Europe. You know, and we are definitely seeing, we're seeing movement there. Uh, but I think it's, you know, the, the best thing we, we can do and the thing we really must do is, is continue to listen to our audience in right. all of the European markets. Right. Uh, and really respond to that feedback. You know, and I think it was great that Phil Spencer a couple of months ago, you know, he, he said in an interview that we need to do better in Europe. And I think he's right. And it's not going to happen overnight. But I think the very fact that he's saying that shows that it's on his mind. Uh, and when something's on his mind, I think as we've seen over the last couple of years, you know, change does come. Um, Things happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, hopefully um, you know, European gamers are people who have got a 360 who haven't necessarily upgraded to Xbox One yet. Right. I really hope they're sitting up and taking notice now of, of the games lineup and the features we're adding, uh, you know, all the time. Uh, things like ID Xbox rounding that out and Windows 10, 
the new features that come with that. Um, you know, and I think we just need to continue to to show that we're we're willing to engage in a discussion and listen and, and, and make positive changes. Right. I mean, I think that Microsoft is definitely on the right path. Uh, you know, as you know, as a American, I I'm not going to disagree and say that I didn't like the direction Microsoft was Microsoft was initially going with the always on console. I think the message was a little construed and maybe wasn't ready. Um, but I like the idea when you look at Crackdown, it shows you the possibilities of what could have been if the Xbox was always online, mm -hmm. you know, an, an always online game like Crackdown, you would have had a single player with 100% destruction, maybe not completely because that would ruin the actual single player to a certain extent, but you know, full destruction in certain aspects, I think that would have been big. So, you know, I, I, I kind of like the idea of that and really hope that, um, you know, they, you know, that Microsoft continues to go into the digital space. And I hope that, you know, worldwide fans see what the Xbox is doing. Um, obviously, in my opinion, they're on the right path. And I hope that the European, you know, gamer sees that as well, um, because it's been really bad in like Germany you know, Spain, things like that. So I'm really think, hoping um, that the appeal was there. I think part of the problem is that mainland Europe, because the the language fragmentation, you know, a lot of a lot of them gravitate straight towards PC because, you know, often they can mod the games with language packs or, you know, um, there's there's things that PC can do that consoles can't. But again, it's um. I think that's true, and then PlayStation's historically been always strong in, in mainland Europe, and you know, and, and they do a great job in mainland Europe. Um, well. can't, and right. can't argue against that, you know, particularly in markets like France, Spain, Italy. Um, it came but, out first yeah. in some territories as well, didn't it? Like because of the localization problems with yes. Uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for whatever reason, yeah, it was it, PS4 was was first in market in a lot of the European markets, but. You know, I, I definitely think uh, we're at the point. I love that we've got we've got the proof points and the benefits to really demonstrate to gamers. Right. You know, in terms of games lineup, in terms of things like Crackdown, the Power of the Cloud, the Windows 10 stuff. Um, and I think you know, if you, we're in a much better position now when you actually weigh up your options. Um, and I, you know, I I hope and I feel that European gamers are really taking notice of that now. Right. Yeah. I it's getting uh, it's getting more important and more popular in, in the US as well. Uh, but it is. Yeah, it's definitely it is. a big deal for us over here. Yeah, I just have a question in regards to uh, the social media and maybe utilizing YouTube and, and Twitch and avenues like that. Do you see um, Microsoft kind of expanding the use of those avenues um, to kind of connect to more gamers? Yeah, I mean, I think we. Uh, Honestly, I think we do a pretty good job of it already. <laughs> but you know, I think uh, you know we we manage a whole raft of of social channels uh, in Europe that are in local language. You know, hopefully with with local relevance and, and talking directly to a local audience. Um, and we're particularly on YouTube. I think we're we're we we are making more of an effort to create uh, content. That's local um, for YouTube, um, you know, and it, it, it's it's for YouTube, but it's video content that can sit across a number of places. Like on, you know, in the UK, we have a, um, on the UK YouTube channel, we have a, a, a series of programs called Xbox On, which I'm involved with, uh, you know, and that's Let's Plays and unboxings and news roundups and all that kind of stuff, with with quite a UK sort of tone and voice. And I know some of our other European markets are, are doing that now as well. France are, Germany are, uh, Poland just sent me a, their, their first couple of episodes of their local video programming yesterday, which looks brilliant. Um, you know, and that's that's really important because that's showing to our local audiences that you know we, first of all, we care and we want to create content for them, and 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 second, that it's a it's a way for us to to really engage with and, and have a discussion with that audience. So, you know, I think we. If you look at the global social channels as well for Xbox, there's some great stuff going on there and huge audiences. And uh, it's, you know, I, I love working in social. You can do things so quickly and have a bit of fun with it. And 
can really bring your audience into the content. Um, so yeah, it's something we're really focused on. Right, right. <clears throat> you know, it, uh, many of the Xbox community know you as AC Bongos. You know, yourself and Major Nelson seem similar being we see you guys the most when it comes to Xbox broadcasting, just in different markets. With the success of Xbox Daily, have you thought about starting your own podcast for the UK or better yet, the European fan base? You know, I'm not sure me and Major Nelson are that similar. I'm, 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 definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely younger. Right. But he definitely has a lot more hair. So there's, you know, there's... But no, I, I, I'm only joking. I hear what you're saying. Um, I would, honestly, I would love to do um, my own podcast. It's a time thing. Um, you know, I just there's there's so much going on. I just I, at the moment don't have the, the time to do it justice. And and honestly, I think I think guys like you do a better job of it. You know, I've kind of uh, uh, and Larry obviously does a, a great job with his podcast. So I'm not sure I would add an awful lot to that space. The thing I have been really excited about is, is like I mentioned, this Xbox on video programming we're doing in the UK. So, if you, you know, if you want to check it out, you can go to youtube.com forward slash Xbox UK. Um, and there's a ton of original video content on there. You know, the, the, the team that are working on that put up like three or four or five new videos a week and right. I some of them. And right. it's, you know, it's it's really kind of, it's quite British in, in tone and uh, it's good fun. Um, you know, and it's just, it's about kind of uh, bringing the fun of Xbox to life a little bit. So I've really loved being involved in that from the kind of planning and production and, you know, in front of camera um, side of things. And uh, yeah, I'm keen to actually do more of that because I haven't been with E3 and Gamescom and everything else going on. I haven't been that involved recently, but I'm going to try and uh, get back into that a little bit more. Yeah, that would be, that would be definitely awesome. Jess? Uh, yeah. Um... I just wondered what your opinion was as a as a social media guy. Um, I, I my personal view would be that console gamers might be easier to engage on social media than the hardcore PC gaming crowd. And I mean, in most in most recent interviews with Phil Spencer, I really feel like he's trying to take ownership of the fact that most of the best. PC games run on Windows, and he's trying to leverage that, the, f the fact that Windows is also a gaming platform that comes under the Microsoft umbrella, um, like at Gamescom, I mean, Gamescom last year, I can't remember there being anything dedicated to PC gaming, but Gamescom this year, like, there was loads of high-end rigs on display, gaming laptops on display, there was like a whole Windows 10 section in the Xbox mm -hmm. booth. Do you... um? Do you see your role expanding to engage PC gamers as well in the future to get them to see Microsoft and Xbox in a, as, in a more positive way in gaming on PC? Overall, from a you know from a Microsoft point of view, you know everything that we're doing is, is really is is starting to consolidate and come together in a way that that I haven't really seen before, and you know we've talked about it in the past. But there's never really been a, a, a real benefit for the for the audience um, or for the you know the, the user of Microsoft products. <laughs> um, and for the first time, I'm seeing that there actually is like there's consistency across our devices. You know, Xbox, phone, band, Surface, Windows 10. Um, you know, there's 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 real uh, benefit for actually you know having an Xbox and having Windows 10. And the things you can do between them, uh, and then other devices as well. Um, so, and I think you know the, the the gaming part of that is becoming more and more compelling uh, to a console audience and to a PC audience as well. So, you know, it hasn't had a, a massive impact on on my job role at the moment, but I've definitely been more involved in things like Windows 10 uh, and things like you know Surface, even Microsoft Band. Um, uh, so yeah, I think it's it's that's only going to become more and more important for us, particularly in the gaming space. Gotcha. Well, you know, obviously you have Rare Replay. Obviously, was very very big, um, very big, huge success over in the UK. Was the number one selling game, um, and I and I think it's a great start 
um, or shall I say, I think it's a great starting point to show Rare is getting back to being Rare. No disrespect to Kinect, <laughs> but Microsoft has a few studios out in Europe um, that have been really successful. Have you heard or seen any news, or excuse me, have you heard or seen any new games being worked on besides the ones we know of, like Fable Legends and Sea of Thieves? And what do you know of Eden Falls and who is developing it? Um, so, first of all, um, I wish I could, but I'm not going to be able to give you any exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> so, no new games to announce okay. tonight, I'm afraid. Uh, Eden Falls, uh, that's a good question, actually. So, it was being worked on at, at um, Lift London. Uh, which was part of Soho Studios. I honestly don't know what the situation is with that at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm not sure I can give you a great answer on that one. Um, in terms of Rare itself, you like I, I hear you. I, I'm, I'm really pleased to... I think Rare Replay is just great for them as a studio because it's such an amazing celebration of, of their history and heritage. And we went out there just before Gamescom actually and did a six hour live stream of Rare Replay. We played every single game in the collection over six hours and had so many um, personalities from from Rare itself. You know, Greg Mills, Chris Alcock, people who'd worked on all these incredible games. You know, Greg Mills has been there since 1989. Wow. <laughs> it's like, here's me talking about being at Xbox for nine years. He's been at Rare for a long time. And, um, yeah, and it's, you know, I, I really got the sense from them that they were like, they had their mojo back in a way. Like, right. they, 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 were re, they were really reconnecting with with the history and the heritage of Rare. And, they you know, they were so proud of every single game in this collection. Uh, it was it was, it was was really cool to be a part of that. So, um, you know, I'm really excited about what they're doing with Sea of Thieves because, uh, you know, I think, they, I think it's a, a truly rare game. Right. And that, and I know that's really exciting for for long time rare fans as well. Um, you know, Fable Legends. I'm, 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 I actually am kind of turning my attention to that a little bit now that we're at a Gamescom. Uh, we need to do some work with the team on that one. Um, but you know, I love the team at Lionhead. Uh, right. We've had sort of, it's been really good fun to work with them in the past on their Fable games, and, and that's that's a really interesting one, obviously for us, just the type of game it is. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the free-to-play model and the, the, the cross-play on, on Windows 10 as well. So, you know, they're really, they're doing some new things uh, that we can't wait to, to see more of. The yeah. Lionhead lead developer, David Ecclebury, um, I played I played Fable Legends for 30 minutes and, and with, with him just talking to me about the game, he's so passionate about that game. And Fable Legends, like, I think it's in really good hands. Lionhead in general. Is in good hands, like in a post modern new era, I would say. Yeah, yeah, they really, they really believe in what they're doing, and they really, really care about Albion and and this the universe they've created. You know, I think that's true of Rare as well, and, and a lot of the, the European studios. There, there is real passion there. Um, you know, and I think both of those those games are are, are going to be are going to demonstrate that passion really well. Now we know you can't obviously tell us about what's being worked on, but there are other projects in the works overall probably in some of the other European studios I would say that's a safe assumption <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that that's fine a safe assumption I mean look, I, I, mean, I don't think I don't think anyone's sitting doing nothing right <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> right 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 yeah I mean because... the thing is, mate, like honestly I, I don't I honestly don't know oh, you know, okay there's, there's things I know and there's things I don't know and you, you you'd probably be surprised at the amount of things I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think we, we, we as Xbox are getting much better at keeping secrets. You know, we, we, we had some genuine surprises at E3. It's funny because that's uh, that's gonna lead us to my next question. But it's, it's <laughs> no, <laughs> it is. It's just you know I I was looking for a press play and Twisted Pixel and I haven't forgot about those studios. So it's like. You know, where are they? What are they working on? You know, those are the type of things I'm interested in. And Lift London, is Lift London, are they a HoloLens studio now? Uh, not entirely sure, mate. Not entirely sure on that either? Okay, no problem. Well, I'm just, I need to find out more about Lift London and then I, I got to get more information on Eden Falls for sure. Now, I know you say to yourself sometimes, wow. It's really cool to be in a media room as the plans unfold in front of you. Presentations are being laid out and the content being produced must be kept secret. 
for example, backwards compatibility and DVR are both pretty nice surprises and the Forza and Halo consoles are cool as well. What is it like to be in a media room like that? And are there similar surprises in, in store that may be announced coming over the rest of the year? So uh, let me address the second part of that first, I think. But one of the things I love about what we're doing just now is that we're constantly you know, adding new features and introducing new things. Uh, and, and the Xbox Live preview program is, is ace because it's, you know, we're giving so many people early access to that stuff. Um, like backward compatibility was available straight away and you know we just introduced gears to war gears of war to that last right. week and, that was awesome uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's great um so that that's really cool so yeah there, there'll definitely be more things coming um you know i can't i, I don't know necessarily what everything is <laughs> right and, right you know right. and i can't promise that it's going to be like megaton stuff but right you know i just love the way we're in a rhythm of introducing new things all the time and improving the system and new features and awesome so on. um the whole thing about like you know seeing some of this stuff uh, in advance is you know it's definitely a thrill um, to be party to some of those things. You know we 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 definitely are getting better at keeping secrets, and part of that is that we don't always hear about everything that far in advance. You know it's kind of kept to a very select group, um, and I kind of like that to be honest because I you know as a gamer and someone who's been a gamer for a long time. I kind of still want to be surprised, you know, at an, in an E3 briefing, and especially because because I love Xbox. It's like if I get surprised by something they're doing, then at the same time as you guys do, then I like that. You know, I kind of want that. I don't want to have all the secrets revealed to me up front. Um, but the thing that's most exciting is, you know, something like back compact. When I heard about that, I was thinking this could this could be huge like people could really lose their mind over this and go wild and the exciting thing is actually seeing what happens when we announce it publicly and that one was was particularly cool because i knew it was coming up in the in the press briefing <laughs> and i was kind of holding my breath to see what would happen and phil spencer tells the story that actually like you know he was he was in the middle of the floor about to right with yeah. auto cues yep. around him and, and people actually read the auto cue before he said it. So the cheers actually started before he'd even got to the announcement. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> I, I remember that. Great. Yeah, it was yeah, awesome. So it's, um, but that was a really, because that, that was a proper E3 moment, I thought. I mm-hmm. thought, you know, and you don't get that many of those big old fashioned E3 surprises where people genuinely get excited and cheer. Um, so that, that's the part of it I think that's, that's really cool is, is seeing how people react to it. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I think the surprises are really awesome. Um, you get things like the whole DVR uh, feature now with the Xbox One, which is just a, another thing, another bonus to to the platform in itself when it comes to being a media hub. I really, really hope, and I'm going to have Mike your brother on um, sometime in September. I haven't set the date yet, but I, I have him set to come on. Um, I'm going to talk to him about maybe trying to get that feature added to some of the apps, the media apps that we have, because you you have um, things like, um, I don't want to say Netflix, things like Sling TV, for example, where maybe that could work with Sling TV if you can DVR those things like that, or some of the big companies like Verizon Fios that runs on the Xbox as its own app, as a TV app as well, not just based in you running your cable line to the Xbox. I don't know how to work software wise, but I think it'd be really cool if they were able to push that into other assets. And I'm really, really trying to push um, Movie Party. It's, it's still one of my biggest things. I don't know if you remember Movie Party. I do. But yeah. it was no. such a big feature on the xbox 360 you know we keep pushing uh, you know or shall i say we keep voting for the things that we want in the xbox and the team will continue to try to produce that stuff i think that'd be really cool yeah you should definitely talk to mike about that <laughs> yeah i definitely am hopefully he'll um he'll he'll uh, lean towards my way and maybe get that out there um mm-hmm. you know obviously before we head out uh does anybody have any other questions for grant uh, no, I just uh, you know want to applaud him and Microsoft, the whole team. I mean, one of the biggest things that I talked about uh, Microsoft and and their lineup uh, was that there wasn't much diversity. And if you look at 
the next year or so. I mean, they're, the game lineup is just is so diverse of, of the offerings that Microsoft has given us. So I'm super excited about that. Um, can't wait to see what see if these looks like. Um, Recore looks amazing. Recore, um, yes, yes. We got yes. The, the three big titles. So um, I, I just can't wait to see what see what those games give us. Of, uh, Thank you. I got a quick question. It's it's mm -hmm. slightly off tack actually. I just wondered, um, just a quick shout out to Idea Xbox. Really, what what are your favorite Idea Xbox games that are coming up? So it's a really good question. The the one that that stood out for me at uh, at Gamescom that we, we kind of showed it pretty quickly was uh, Cities XL. Is it Cities uh, XL or City, City Skylines? Skylines. City Skylines. Skylines. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. Like you know, I was talking about Civilization earlier. I'm like, I'm really into those type of games. <laughs> and, uh, I you know, I kind of feel I wish we had more games like that on on uh, on Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So that's one I'm really excited about on ID. I've never got around to properly playing um, uh, uh, the Escapists, mm. and I, and I yeah. really want to go back and do that because I haven't that, played that it either. Just, yeah, it, yeah, it looks so addictive. cool. Yeah, so I'd really like to get in that. And I know it's not strictly an idea Xbox game, but I was so pleased to see uh, Elite Dangerous come, uh, come to Xbox yeah. One. And, I, you know, I've played the first, you know, a few hours of that, and, God, it's absolutely beautiful. And, and it's just, you know, that kind of game is, is right up my street as well. So Also really <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's funny you say that. I don't want to touch it yet because I'm playing Skyrim, and I've been, I've been like really harassing Phil for like a, a flight, you know, a dog fighting game. Cause I was a big wing commander guy growing up in colony wars. So, um, you know, I remember he told me, Hey, check out freelancer. Um, I think was something that the Xbox, um, was a part of the Xbox portfolio a while ago and everything, but I'm really glad to see Elite Dangerous is on it. And I can't wait to get my hands into it. I just don't want to. I just don't want to stop Skyrim after going so It'll far, take, you know? Yeah. <laughs> leave there just to take over your life. Your I life. know. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to do it just four yet. in the morning on a work day saying, I'll do one more mission. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, you know, before we head out, some of the questions we asked were both a mix of fan and tech questions. But one fan in particular named Christian, who's from the UK, by the way, wanted to know, with all that's happened to the Xbox One from the reveal of the console to where the console is today, being you've experienced it all as both a team member and a gamer, have you felt the change in the Xbox One as in terms of it becoming a must-have console? Well, first of all, thank you, Christian, from the UK for your question. <laughs> uh, no, I appreciate it, mate. I, you know, I totally have. And I, and I think, the you know, I talked to a little bit earlier, you know, we had a pretty rough start to, to Xbox One. and. It was a really, it was a difficult six months, um, but it was one where we learned a lot and we, we had to learn to, to make changes quickly and respond to feedback quickly. And it reminded us, I think, you know, and Microsoft as a whole probably as well, that it, we, we need to listen really carefully to our fans uh, and, and make genuine reactions to what our fans are, are telling us. Um, you know, and I think that the changes that we made at the time, the changes that we continue to make, the constant updates to the Xbox Live service, the new features that we're adding, as well as the new games that we're adding to this incredible lineup that we've got over the next uh, two years. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope people look at that and say, yes, this is this is the right direction. These are positive changes that that, that Xbox are making and. And, and I hope the community feels that they are being listened to um, as well. And it does totally come back. It comes back to you guys. It comes back to the community. It comes back to people who go out and buy Xbox 360s and ones and spend money on games. You know, telling us what you think and what you like, and more importantly, what you don't like. Um, in a, in you know, in a in a constructive way. Right. Right. And, and that is just so important to us. And, and that's the thing over the past couple of years, over the life cycle of Xbox One, that I'm the most happy about is that, you know, we, I think more than we're closer than ever to our community. Um, and, and, you know, and you guys in the community are, are absolutely central to, to everything that we do. And it's brilliant. As, as someone who's worked in community management and in social media, that's, 
it's uh, that, that, I'm so happy about that, and I just you know I want us to to continue. So you know, thank you to you guys, and, and thank you to the wider Xbox community for for continuing to give us that feedback and shouting loudly and and, and being part of this uh, the journey that we're on because uh, we we massively appreciate it, um, and, and we know that, that that without you guys we we wouldn't be here. Well, I want to thank you, Graham, for giving us the opportunity to speak with you. Great job on Xbox Daily, and uh, we we hope you'll come back on the show to chat with Tick Podcast and the Yes Boss community in the future. It is my absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it, and I'm glad we, we were finally able to, to find time for it. So thanks, Jens. <laughs> yes, thanks a lot. For the fans, by the fans.